In this video, we'll talk about differential interference contrast microscopy or DIC microscopy. So let's talk about the working principle in brief and then we would elaborate. So it's a dual beam interference device and the DIC microscope use the dual beam interference optics which is based on polarized light and two crystalline beam splitter known as Wollaston prism or Nomarsky prism. So the overall working principle is very simple. So the sample should have gradient of refractive index and different thickness. So these thickness and differences in refractive index would eventually be translated into differences in terms of brightness and contrast. So imagine a light is passing through the cell in different locations and it would encounter different uh, organelles with different refractive indexes. That might lead to retardation of certain kind of uh, waves when it passes through the cell. So overall uh, principle which forms the contrast of image is the optical path difference. And this optical path difference is translated into the change in amplitude in the image. Now let us talk about the image characteristics. It has a 3D like shadow cast effect where the edge are really crisp and sharp unlike phase contrast microscopy. So one can imagine this to be an upgraded version and more rectified version of phase contrast microscopy. And lastly, it is good for observing transparent, unstained and even live cells. So let us talk about the physics. So this particular microscope use polarized light. So obviously, uh, optical element that can generate polarized light such as polarizer would be used. So the specimen is kept between analyzer and polarizer. Polarizer and analyzer can be kept in different orientations and in DIC microscope they are kept in a crossed orientation. So in this crossed orientation a polarized light that passes through the polarizer would be eventually polarized its electronic field vectors electrical field vectors would be vibrating in only one direction which is depicted by these arrows here but the analyzer the optical axis of the analyzer doesn't allow this light to pass so in short no light would be detected in this particular configuration this is known as crossed polarizer configuration now you must be wondering if no light is detected then how the image would be formed in this case and this is the principle. The light that passes through the cells would actually be retarded and there would be change in optical path length that would lead to generation of light which doesn't have a plain polarization uh, effect. It might be elliptically polarized or different polarization could be there. That would highlight some important features in the cell. So here are two situations where the sample uh, rack is empty. So one should see a perfect black background. But when there is a sample in, in, in the sample holder and if the analyzer and polarizer is there, so a uh, image like this which is a pseudo 3D image is created. So how it is created? So overall there is a phase difference due to the specimen structure, thickness and refractive index of the specimen. This is leading to a partial interference and the polarization state of the light actually changes. It is no more plain polarized. So eventually it allows some light to be passed through the analyzer and the lights that pass through the analyzer creates these relatively light spots inside the image. Now let us try to understand the ray diagram. So here is the polarizer and just after the polarizer there would be a prism called Wollaston prism or Nomarsky prism. We'll talk about it. Then there would be condenser, specimen plane, objective, more Wollaston prism. Uh, I mean it is known as the objective Wollaston prism. And then finally it would be analyzer before the detector. So the light from the polarizer would be generating a plane polarized light. Now even that plane polarized light gets split into two halves when it passes through a Wollaston prism due to the property of birefringence. So overall two rays are produced 
and the electronic field field vector of these rays are perpendicular to each other orthogonal to each other so there are e rays and o rays depicted in this diagram they are parallel parallel between the condenser and the objective eventually they get combined in the wollaston prism too which is just after the objective and some part of the light gets pass through the analyzer and forms the light in the detector or the camera so the condenser dic prism acts like a beam splitter and the objective dic prism works like a beam combiner so now it's important to know that the trajectories between these o rays and the e rays means ordinary and extraordinary rays are basically separated uh by 0.2 to 2 micron which is lesser than the resolution limit and this particular distance is known as shear distance why it is important because lesser the shear distance greater would be the resolution and more crisper would be the image now anyway let us consider three types of scenarios a b and c in a both ordinary and extraordinary light pass through the uh Uh, space i mean i think maybe the slide and reaches the wollaston prism too after the objective in b both the light are passing through the uh, 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 from the place which has same refractive index so none of that has a uh, optical path difference in case of c there is a optical path difference because the ordinary and extraordinary light is passing through regions where the refractive index and thickness is very different so the light number c would be retarded and there would be optical path difference so this optical path difference would create basically elliptically polarized light now elliptically polarized light can still cross the analyzer and the linearly polarized light that were created in a and b situation would be actually blocked so this is how the overall dic microscope works now in dic microscope we understood that this is a dual beam interference uh, objective uh, and basically the dual beam is basically this o ray and the e ray and they combine at the level of the analyzer and ultimately that basically forms the image now there could be a important concept known as bias retardation or the configuration of the um, dic microscope it can be operated in extinction mode or in a biased mode where a positive or negative bias could be introduced most commons are where they are used in a biased mode when there is no bias the interference is symmetric the image is dark where there is no phase differences like shown here but when there is a bias which is introduced by the operator and the way one can do it by putting phase uh, plates which can allow a phase delay of either lambda by 10 or lambda by 20 that can enhance the visibility of small optical path differences even small granular structures that are apparently non visible would become visible using this method and it would produce that shadow cast effect based on the positive bias or negative bias there would be a, a the shadow the direction of the shadow cast would be different so if you can see these two arrows in these two diagrams you can see one the arrow head point the lighted side and these lighted sides are different in these two different bias mode anyway the direction determines the shading of the image so if we talk about the dic and the phase contrast microscopy in quick detail i mean in in a quick manner you can see that the image appearance look more crisp 3d and shadow cast effect is visible in dic whereas in phase contrast it is enhanced in terms of contrast but sometimes the edges are blurry and a halo artifact is seen so basically the contrast generation modes are different here the difference in optical path between adjacent points are translated into amplitude differences in phase contrast the absolute phase shift gives rise to the contrast now the principles are also different so basically dic uh, is based on the principle of dual beam interference and in case of phase contrast the interference is created by using annular phase rings 
and the optical components that are used in these two microscopy are widely different. For example, Wollaston prism or Nomarsky prism are used in this case of DIC. Uh, plain polarized lights, uh, light is used, so polarizer and combination of analyzer is used, which is not used in case of phase contrast microscopy. If you want to learn more about phase contrast microscopy, you can quickly watch the video which is present in the I button. So I hope this video was informative. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.